ורקת יהווה, בהשם יהו שי, בהשם רכה קודש. Welcome to another live lesson. The name of this one is The Kingdom is Not for Everybody. And pretty much this uh, title um, came to me last night when I was about to lay down. And um, when it came into my mind, I wrote it down. And then a couple of precepts came to mind. I kind of wrote them down. I wasn't sure where they were at, so I had to look for them this morning. And um, it pretty much, you know, allowed for this lesson to be brought out because that's um, that's a main uh, false doctrine that's taught in these uh, wacky tacky Christian churches, you know, because um, that is the you know one of the main. I mean, there's others. That are being taught, but that's one of the main falsehoods that are being taught out here in these uh, false churches, you know, the so-called Christian churches out here. And uh, I just wanted to address, you know, this, um, wanted to address it, you know, to be able to um, bring out, you know, some edification on it. So that we could um, show you that it's not for everybody. I mean, no matter how many times we've gone through the scriptures, done many lessons on the Lord is only coming for the nation of Israel, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians, you know, these devils are still going to keep pushing because at the end of the day, that's what they were set up to do. And, you know, no one wants to be told that they are not, you know, welcomed. You know, nobody wants to be excluded from the kingdom to come although Esau and these other nations have had all of the glory and the splendor of this kingdom and we've had not, nothing but hardship they want also the glory that's coming later on in the kingdom to be also you know extended to them but that's not the case I just want to read this one precept before we get into some of these other precepts but when we read Romans 9 I'll start at three. It says, For I could wish that myself were a curse from the Messiah, for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. And this is something that they um, fail or refuse to address, is that the Lord is dealing with Israel according to the flesh because there was a promise. And that promise is written in the contract that today is called the Bible. In the ancient scrolls. This is why, you know, vocab and them have something called replacement theology or supersessionism because they're trying to erase Israel out of the picture in order for them to, or, or and put themselves in the picture because it doesn't work with both in the picture. So you have to remove the main um, character of the movie so that the antagonist, which is the bad guy, you know, um, can shine. Because the movie was written for the protagonist, which is the good guy, if I'm not mistaken on, on, the, uh, on, on either one of those. But the good guy, they're trying to erase because the good guy gets to shine while the bad guy doesn't get to shine in the Most High's movie. The good guy being Jacob, the Israelites. The bad guy being Esau, the Edomites. So in order for them to go around the producer slash director's, you know, vision and his uh, movie, they have to remove the good guy and put the bad guy as the main star. And that's pretty much what, you know, vocab and these devils have done. That's why they refuse to, to address the uh, according to the flesh, you know, and it goes back to the contract. You know, back to the promise that the Most High made. The children of the kingdom are counted for the promise. The promise, the promise, the promise. You know? And, um... And, um... They can't change that. Although they've tried to. And pretty much what they're committing is blasphemy. 
you know. But it goes on to say, my kinsmen, according to the my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites. This is who the promise is for, to whom pertain the adoption and the glory and the covenants. So it says, to whom pertain the adoption. What is the adoption? Yahweh Shai dying on the cross, shedding his blood, as the bringing in of the second covenant. Because the second covenant hasn't been fulfilled yet. It won't be fulfilled until the kingdom. And only the Israelites will be partakers of that. But the blood of Yahweh Shai was what opened or gave that covenant force. Now when the kingdom of heaven is established and we're changed. Our bodies change. Our minds change. Then the second covenant. Then we'll be able to receive the laws into our inward part. And then the second covenant will be you know, um, fulfilled. Not before that. So the adoption, Yahweh Shai down on the cross, shedding his blood for the nation of Israel to make that atonement for us so that we can get back into the good graces of Yahweh, the Father, and receive the ministry of reconciliation, which is being brought back into the good graces or the friendship of the Most High so we could be, you know, um, close to the Most High again. And the glory. Now, what is the glory? The glory is the kingdom of heaven. That's what the glory is all about. Let's go to Psalms 149. But before we read that, I want to go into this word glory, see what it says. The glory. The word glory is the Hebrew word doxa. Comes from the word, from the etymology dokeo. Opinion, judgment, view, opinion, estimate, whether good or bad, concerning someone. In the New Testament, always a good opinion concerning one, resulting in praise, honor, and glory. And what is that praise, honor, and glory? That the Heavenly Father is on our side. That He gave us law, statutes, and commandments. That He's going to have mercy upon us. And that He sent His Son to redeem us back to Him. And that He's given us a kingdom. This is why Yahweh I said, let's get this real quick. Um, I believe that's St. John chapter 12. Um, just bear me one second. Just to save time. Luke 12, 32. Fear not, little flock, for it is your, your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And that it's the father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. Who? The Israelites. So that glory is what? The kingdom of heaven. Splendor, brightness, you know, dignity, so on and so forth, right? So now when we go to Psalms 149, it says, Let the saints be joyful in glory. And what is the glory? The kingdom of heaven. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Where? In the kingdom of heaven. Because that's where, you know, we are heading, heading to. So let's look up this word glory here. Let's see what it says for the word glory here. The word there is kabawad, or you could also say kabad. Right here, kabad, which is uh, honor thy father and thy mother. So kabawad is glory, honor, glorious, abundance. So what is that glory? The kingdom of heaven. Abundance, riches. Yeah, because in the kingdom of heaven, there will be riches. There will be glory, honor, dignity. We're going to get our honor back and we're going to get our dignity back. It says that the Lord will give us praise and honor in every land where we will put to shame. Beginning with here in America. That's why it says, you know, in the place where it will said unto them, you are not the sons of the living power. There, I'm sorry, that you are not the children of the most high. There it shall be said unto them that thou art the sons of the living power. The only true benevolent Magnificent, omnipotent power, the only power, which is Yahweh and his son Yahweh Shai. So we're going to get that back. Honor, reputation, right? Because we lost our reputation. We lost our reputation when we went off. There's a whole, you know, that's there's a whole story behind it, a backstory, you know, and, and our purpose. But for the most part, we lost our reputation. So now we're on, on the verge of getting our reputation back. And it begins with this knowledge. You know, we're being shaped and molded right now for the future. You know, the future leaders of Israel, so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians, are being, 
you know, um, groomed right now for the future rulership that's coming. Because the whole world is going to be forced to, you know, learn the law, statutes, and commandments that have been in the Bible all along. From the beginning of time. From the beginning of time to the time where it was scribed. During the time of Moses. You know, all the way up until present day, 2022, the year of, of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai turning up. It's still in force. All right? So we're getting our reputation back. Honor, reverence, glory, glory, right? Because right now we're not reckoned among these nations. We're not recognized. We're still that proverb and that byword, you know, even though we're coming back to the Lord. But we're at the point now where the enemy is getting nervous because they're seeing the progress. They're seeing the buildup. They're seeing the bones coming together with their bones. They're seeing the nation coming back together. And what happened whenever these nations saw the, saw us coming back together? They will come together and try to disrupt the building. Back then it was physical, today it's spiritual. And they're spiritually trying to disrupt, you know, the building back up of the um, spiritual house or the spiritual kingdom, you know, which is the tabernacles of David. You know, they, they got even our own people, you know, coming against us. You know, to try and stop this. Because Esau knows that without Jake, they can't do anything. You know, a lot of those questions and thoughts, ideas, scriptures that vocab and other of these white supremacist plantation Christians bring out. They got it from Israelites. You know, this is why Esau went to who? To When, when he went to take Gad down, he went to the, the Braves, you know, the Gadites. He also went to who? To Jake. You know, the Buffalo Soldiers. Because they know that Jake can take Jake down. When you go to the different empires, you always, you always had turncoats. You always had sambos. Constantly, you know, uh, trying to disrupt the order because they were promised a better life. And that's the same, you know, you could read about it in all different types of script scriptures. You know, that the Old Testament and New Testament. You know, where you had a lot of sellouts, a lot of sambos trying to disrupt the word. So we're getting back this reputation. And we're, as we're getting the reputation back, you have Edomites that don't like that. And they're trying to stop it. But we can assure you that it's all in vain. Because this, the uh, words of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai will stand. Not your mischievous deeds. So it says, let the saints be, glo uh, be joyful in glory. What is the glory? The kingdom of heaven. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Why? Because we don't have to set an alarm clock to get up, you know, at, you know, at the earliest or the crack of dawn to get ready to go work at a job where we're not being paid with real money first and foremost. And we're not being paid our just due based off of our labor. You know, and have to be subject to to um, double standards, you know, being looked over because, you know, of your your so-called race, color, you know. So we're not going to have to deal with that anymore. It says, let them let the high praises of the most high be in their mouth and a two edged sword in their hand. And it goes into something else. I just wanted to get the point. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds in the kingdom of heaven. So going back to Romans 9, who are Israelites to whom pertain of the adoption and the glory, which is what? The kingdom of heaven and the covenants, both covenants that were given to who? That were given to the Israelites. It says, and the giving of the law, because no other nation was given the law. So no other nation was promised, you know, everlasting life. No other nation was promised the kingdom of heaven. And see, they attack in this scripture because this is the nail you know, and this is the scripture that de devours, demolishes, and destroys their whole argument. Psalms 147, 19 and 20. And they always say that, well, you know, Psalms 147, 19 and 20, it really doesn't mean what it's saying. But this is how the devil operates. He, he gaslights, you know. And when he says that, you have simpletons out there say, well, you know what? You might be right. Even though it's saying the clearest day, the evidence is there. It's factually speaking, you know. The facts are there right in your face. 
but they still get you no know, they still throw that doubt out there just like the serpent which we believe was vocab that big fat head of his at in the garden you know gaslighting eve and ge and eve fell for it hook line and sinker like she falls for it today so it says he showeth his word unto jacob his statutes and his judgments unto israel what is the words of the most high what are his statutes what are his judgments the bible the scriptures the law the prophets you know the judgments and everything in between he only showed that to israel he says he the most high not you not you devils, not you sell out Israelites. He, the Most High Yahweh, have not dealt so with any nation. So there's no other nation on the planet Earth that has received these laws, statutes, and commandments. So when we read the Bible and we read the laws and we, re and we read about the promises that was given to a particular nation who was promised to a particular man, Abraham, and to his seed after him, Isaac and Jacob. And it was written down and etched in stone so that it can be a witness later on. Because the Heavenly Father allowed Moses and the men that were with him to scribe all of these things so that it can be contractual. Because when you have a contract, you sign the contract. Your signature tells the anyone reading that contract that you agreed to the terms of that contract. And when you agree to the terms of that contract, whatever's written in there, that's what has to, you know, that's what any lawful, you know, uh, court of law would, would uh, um, have to go with. And when we look at the evidence, the evidence showed that the nations were never a part of this. That's why they're troubling us in building. So it says, he hath not dealt so with any nation, and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. So these nations don't know the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, or anything about them. They haven't received the laws, statutes, commandments. They have not received the promises. They have not received the covenants. They have not received the glory. They have not received the adoption. They have not received the service of the Most High. They have not received anything but what they don't want which is slavery being the slaves of the real israelites the so-called negroes latinos and native american indians so when we go back to romans 9 again let's read that again who are israelites who pertain to the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of the most high which is what the priesthood and the promises okay and that was the promise the most high made a promise to abraham to uh, Isaac and ended up at Jacob. You know, that's what it ended up at. So with that being said, let's go to the Apocrypha. Let's go to the first scripture on the list. Uh, second Ezra chapter eight and one. It says, and he answered me saying, the most high have made this world for many. But the world to come for few because only the nation of Israel will be ruling in the next kingdom that's coming. And right now, only an elect, a small number of the nation of Israel will be saved to be partakers and rulers in the kingdom. And then you're going to, you know, then the women are going to be there also, but they're not going to be rulers. They're going to be in their place where they, where they, were, where they were created to, uh, to be. And they're going to be happy. They're not going to have the, the goddamn serpent high, uh, gaslighting them. Telling them that they're equal to the man. Telling them that, you know, to, to do things that are contrary to the man. Try to be over the man. That's this society. All nations have done that. But especially these Edomites. Which are the so-called white people. They're the ones that really push that feminist spirit out there. The so-called women's equal rights. Women are not equal to men. Get that through your skull. All right? There's a reason why the, the Lord made the man stronger than the woman. Now, you might have these women today that are, that are strong, but that's because they're, they're, uh, the foods that are out there are changing the makeup, the metabolism of their bodies. They're taking uh, men's supplements to build up big-ass muscles. 
that's not natural. That's not normal. If you let women and men both, you know, uh, develop naturally, the man is going to be naturally stronger than the woman. I ain't never seen, you know, when you go, when you watch those strong man contests, I ain't never seen no women out there competing with those men. It's not a, it's not called a strong man and strong woman contest. It's called a strong man contest. And there's no woman that can compete with those men. This is just something that's been gaslit, gaslit and, and, and perpetrated by the devil of all devils, you know, Esau. So it goes on to say, I, let me read this again. And he answered me saying, the most I have not made this world for many. But the, I'm sorry, the most I have made this world for many. But the world to come for few. And the few are the Israelites. And not every Israelite in the kingdom is going to be, you know, the, the top ruling government. All men will be kings. All Israelite men will be kings, you know. They will have crowns on their head, rulership, thrones, and all of that. But there's only going to be a handful of men that are going to be the, the uh, government underneath the Most High and Yahweh Shai, which are the 144,000. All right. It says, I will tell thee a similitude, Ezra, as when thou askest the earth, it shall say unto thee that it giveth much mold whereof earthen uh, vessels are made. Right. You have plenty of clay out there. You know, plenty of dirt, plenty of other different resources, says, but little dust that gold cometh of, right? Because it's only so much gold. And this is why gold is so precious, because there's so few of it in comparison to other metals. So even so is the course of this present world, right? Because this present world, as the Lord said, I will make a man more precious and fine gold. That's talking about the Israelite man. And you're going to see in these up and coming months, you know, towards the end of this year, or whenever uh, the uh, all hell breaks loose, shit hit the fan scenario, you're going to see the men of the Lord be those men that are going to be more precious than fine gold. And the kingdom to come is not going to be for all nations, even though all nations will be there. They're going to learn their place. They're going to have, you know, a certain, after they serve their captivity, they're going to have a certain amount of freedom, but they're always, they will always be tributary to us. You know, it says, there be many created, but few shall be saved. All right. And that's going into the elect of the nation of Israel being saved, you know, and a lot of Israelites are going to die. And here in America alone, two thirds of the nation of Israel are going to die. You know, so if there was, let's say, a million people, a, mil a million, a million Israelites in America, I'm just throwing a number out there, you have to think that what is that? Six hundred and sixty-six thousand of them, if if uh, my math is correct, will die, and only like about thirty-three, uh, thirty-three uh, thousand would be saved. Just you know, just to throw a number out there. If, if, if my math, I mean, I know the, the 66 and 33 are, are correct, as, as, um, saying as far as the thousands are concerned. All right, now let's jump from there. Let's jump to the 41st verse. It says, For as the husbandman soweth much seed upon the ground, and planteth many trees, and yet the thing that is sown, and the thing that is sown good in his season cometh not up, Neither doth all that is planted take root. Yeah, because not every, uh, every, because you, you have a lot of people, a lot of Israelites that heard this word, and not all of them are going to receive it. Not all of them are going to accept it. You know, you have a lot of na different nations, and not every one of those nations is going to be uh, in this, uh, in the kingdom of heaven as far as um, the glory of it, like the nation of Israel. It says, even so is it of them that are sown in the world. They shall not all be saved. Because not every Israelite is going to be saved. Just the elect. I answered then and said, I answered then and said, If I have found grace, let me speak. Like as the husbandman's seed perisheth, if it come not up, and receive not thy rain in due season, or if there come too much rain and corrupt it, even so perisheth man also. 
which is formed with thy hands, and is called thine own image, because thou art like unto him, for whose sake thou hast made all things, and liken him unto the husband's, husbandman's seed. Yeah, because what Ezra was doing is he was reasoning and rationing as a man. But this is the Most High's program. Be not wroth with us, but spare thy people. So see, because somebody will read that and say, well, he's talking about all people. You know, he's concerned about all people. No, he's not. It's letting you know in the very next verse who he's talking about. Because when the scriptures say in uh, Peter that the Lord, you know, did not want any to perish, that's talking about Israelite, that all men will come to our repentance, meaning all Israelite men. Just like here, he's speaking about the things that are formed in thy hand and in, in the image of the Most High. It says, be not uh, wroth with us, but spare thy people and have mercy unto thine own inheritance. For thou art merciful unto thy creature, which is what? The Israelites. And ain't talking about all nations. Just the Israelites. Now let's jump from there. Let's jump down to the 50th verse. It says, For many great miseries shall be done to them that in the latter times shall dwell in the world, because they have walked in great pride. But understand thou for thyself, and seek out the glory, which is the kingdom, for such as be like thee, which is what? The elect. For unto you is paradise opened. And this paradise is the kingdom of heaven is only open to the Israelites. Nobody else. The tree of life is planted, and that's why we're eating from the tree of life now. But we have to be changed and, and the laws inserted into our inward parts in order for us to be or become immortal. It says, the time is uh, to come is prepared. Plenteousness is made ready. Right, that's what the Lord said, that at, at the Most High's right hand are pleasures evermore. We haven't even begun to really imagine what the kingdom is going to be like and, and all of the the different you know things that we're going to be able to do once the kingdom of heaven is, is established it's going to be something a city is builded and rest is allowed yea perfect goodness and wisdom the root of evil is sealed up from you right so the reason why the elect are going to make it through is because the lord has a special Spirit in them, not to do or to uh, go astray, but to stay on that course. It says, weakness and the moth is hid from you, right? So everything that is evil and wicked, that's making these people evil and wicked and keeping them in that um, position is being removed away from the elect. And corruption is fled into hell to be forgotten, meaning into the grave, because it won't touch the elect. Because the Most High has his angels and his word protecting the elect from these things. Sorrows are past and in the end it showed the treasure of immortality. Because this is pretty much what we're fighting for. And immortality begins with believing in Yahweh and his son Yahweh Shai. That's everlasting life. You can read about that in the book of um, St. John, the 17th chapter. And others, that's just one out of many. And therefore ask thou no more questions concerning the multitude of them that perish. Right, because we're not supposed to be concerned with the ones that are perishing. We're supposed to be concerned with the ones that will be saved and delivered, which are the elect of the nation of Israel. For when they had taken liberty, they despised the Most High. And you see that. You know, I know we all had the same consensus at, at first, you know, the Most High is going to take Jake out, you know, and you don't really, we didn't really fully understand because we were coming out of the same world that they were coming in and we wanted mercy and, you know, we was hoping the Lord would extend mercy to Jake out there too. But the longer that you're in this thing and the more you understand and the more you see Jake in the condition that they're in and bucking up against the truth and no matter what, you know, you tell them they're not listening then you understand why. You know, you know, you see them uh, choosing certain types of lifestyles. You know, you see them choosing you no know, pleasure over the most high. And you and you see, you know, the, the evil shit that they do, and then you really understand that you understand more and more why the Lord is going to destroy them. 
And we hasten for that. It says, thought scorn of his law and forsook his ways. Yeah. They ain't trying to listen to this. You know, I was just watching the brothers up in uh, Boston. And uh, there was this Jake, an older Jake, dark skin Jake, bald head. He had, you know, he had a boy. I'm not talking about he had a bald spot. I'm talking about he had a bald head. No beard, nothing, talking to the brothers. And he's trying to, you know, he's saying some of the right stuff because he's saying, you know, you know, well, you know, got to try the spirit by the spirit. Yeah, you're right. You know, so the brother is asking him, well, if that's the case, then what is it that we're saying that's wrong? To, you know, you know, uh, uh, or and and if that's the case, uh, uh, are we false prophets? He t- he asked it, he asked him, and he could, well, I can't I can't formulate that opinion because pretty much he's a child tossed to and fro. He's an old bottle, and new wine is not coming in there because it's leaking right back out. It's not even pu- being poured into the vessel. Is leaking out the sides, you know, because he's pretty much, you know, uh, um, a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A um, chi- um, child tossed to and fro. Even though he's an older individual, he's a child tossed to and fro. He has no stability, no, you know, because he's listening to this people, he listens to that people, this religion, that religion. It talking about he's still learning, you know. Anyways, it says, moreover, they have trodden down his righteous, which are the prophets. It says, and said in their heart that there is no God. And you have Israelites that have that thought. Yea, and that knowing they must die. For as the things aforesaid shall receive you, so thirst and pain are prepared for them. For it was not his will that men should come short, uh, should come to naught. Right, because the promise was everlasting life, but it was only to who? To the elect. It says, But they which be, be created have defiled the name of him that made them and were unthankful unto him, which prepared life for them. And therefore is my judgment now at hand. These things have I not showed unto all men, but unto thee and a few like thee. Then answered I and said, Behold, O Lord, now hast thou showed me the multitude of, thy, of the wonders which thou wilt begin to do in the last times. But at what time? Thou hast not showed me. And this is heavy. You know? Because they, they they didn't listen to the Lord. When the Lord brings the judgment upon them, they're going to be in a bad case. Now let's jump over to the next chapter, 2 Ezra 9. And let's go to the 13th verse. It says, And therefore be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished, and when? Right. Because we are coming to it, but our thing is what? We are hastening the, the day of the Lord so that righteousness can be established once again. Because the ones that are going to be destroyed, are already that's already etched in stone. It's already set up. The ones that are going to be saved, it's already etched in stone. So the Lord is telling Ezra, worry about yourself and such as be like you and the coming salvation for you and, you, and your like. Don't worry about these other people that are going to be destroyed. They are already hopeless. It says, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved and who, uh, whose the world is. What world? The world to come. And for whom the world is created. Yeah, because right now as we speak, this is the time of this world. And we know that the whole world lieth in wickedness. So let them be how they are. Let them be what they, what they be. You know? And at the end, you know, we're, we're going to, we will witness who the Lord is dealing with and who the Lord is not dealing with. Then answered I and said, um, Matter of fact, let me just jump down to the 17th verse. And he answered me saying, Like as the field is, so is also the seed. Many. As the flowers be, such are the colors also. Many. Such as the workman is, such also is the work, much. And as a husbandman is himself, so is his husbandry also, much. For it was the time of the world, right? You know, this is the time of the world. That's why the Lord said, using the, through the mouth of Paul, the apostle Paul, using the world is not abusing it. You know, we have to live in this world, but we don't have to be partakers of this world because we understand that this world is temporary. The world to come is going to be everlasting. 
It says, and now when I uh, when and now when I prepared the world which was not yet made, even for them to dwell in, that now live, no man speak against me. Yeah, because everything was in proper order. It says, for then every one obeyed, but now the manners of them which are created in this world that is made are corrupted by a perpetual seed and by a law which is unsearchable, rid themselves. Right, because pretty much they've been corrupted by the the ways of this world. You know, and they've been, um, for lack of better words, bamboozled by the serpent that pretty much fed them this nonsense. So, let me read this again. It says, For then everyone obeyed, but now the manner of them which are created in this world that is made are corrupted by what? A perpetual seed. And by a law which is unsearchable, rid themselves. Because the rulers of this world have the people in a corrupt mindset because they are corrupt. They are the wicked. So the wicked will do wicked things. They are not subject to uh, righteousness. They are subject to wickedness. So when we read Ecclesiastes 10 and 1, it says, A wise judge will instruct his people, and the government of a prudent man will be, will, uh, is well ordered. And we see that this, this government is not well ordered. That's why everything is in chaos and turmoil. Because the rulers are causing this. Because they have a plan, an agenda. And the agenda really doesn't include anyone else but themselves living at the top. And just the mindless slaves being at their beck and call. That's who they really want. They don't want people to think for themselves. They don't want people to formulate opinions. They don't want people to, you know, question. This is why you have movies like 1984. Where if anybody had a thought outside of what Big Brother said, they were considered a thought criminal. You know? Because the, the, the future in the eyes of the so-called illuminated ones, you know, the international banking families, is a future where they're on top and everyone else is a mindless slave to them. This is what they plan on bringing. This is why... They bought, cheated, lied, stole, you know, and, and everything else in between to buy up everything so that they can have it all in their control. It's already set up under the infrastructure of their businesses, which is only a handful of businesses that own all of the products that are sold worldwide. And then that system will eventually be set up to where in order for you to purchase you have to get the thing, you know, that will allow you to make digital transactions. Which is the M-O to the T-B. It says, as the judge of the people is himself, so are his officers. Because you see what manner of men, for, uh, I use that term loosely, the international bankers are. And you see the people that are in charge of their corporations are the same way. Like your presidents, your vice presidents, you know, your secretary of states, your, your senators, your congressmen, your mayors, so on and so forth, police chiefs, corrupt to the bone. <clears throat> Why? Because anyone that goes against, they either demonize them, call them crazy, or take them out. It says, and what manner of man the ruler of the city is, such are all they that dwell therein. You see? So not just the ruler and his officers, but the ruler and the people that are governed under that ruler. And Barack Oshai, that he allowed us to escape from that. Because the scriptures say that the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth his hand unto iniquity. So it says, an unwise king destroyeth his people. And that's exactly what's happening. By pushing this lifestyle for their agenda, they thinking that they're making their thing progress and go forward. 
But really what they're doing is they're bringing the destruction sooner. Because Sodom, Gomorrah, and the other five cities, Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, Zeboim, and Zoar, which are those five Canaanite cities that were committing those abominations, there came a point where the Lord was about to judge them. That's why Yahushua and the angels, the other two angels came down. And they went right into Sodom, the city of Sodom. Because it was time, the time of judgment for them. Because their sins and their iniquities have reached to the heavens and the Lord had enough for them. So we're at the point now where the Lord had enough of Babylon the Great. That's why everything is moving speedily. That's why he's allowed these devils, you know, to, to uh, put together this plan and move it speedily forward. Because it's time for this place to be judged. That's why everything is moving so fast. So it says, But through the prudence of them which are in authority, the city shall be inhabited. Right. Because if you have somebody that's prudent, that's wise, and they know the right things to do, they're going to govern their officers and their people righteously. And that brings stability. I believe that might be in the wisdom of Solomon. It speaks about the, the rulers, you know. Pretty much uh, being able to rule or scepters, you know, it speaks about scepters. Yeah, but it, that comes through what? Through wisdom. And they can't say that they don't have the book because they have the book. But they refuse the book. Why? Because they are the wicked. And the wicked will not understand. The wicked will not be able to accept or do the right things. So it says, the power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. And in due time, he will set up over it one that is profitable. And this is why Yahweh Shai is coming. To claim his kingdom. This is why he's known as the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Now let's go back to 2 Ezra 9 and 20. It says, So I considered the world, and behold, there was peril because of the devices that, came, that were come un into it. And this is why you see everything going the way it's going. The pestilences, the economic woes, you know, and everything that's happening. The famines that are about to really ramp up. Now, one may say, well, that's being controlled behind the scenes by the international banking families. Yeah, you're right. But who do you think controls them? The Most High, because this is his movie, remember? So all of these things are moving forward. It says, uh, and I saw and spared it greatly. Like when we read in the book of uh, Revelation, the seventh chapter, the Lord said not to destroy the earth, nor the trees, until the servants of the Lord were sealed in their foreheads. See? So that's what's happening right now. It says, And have kept me a grape of, this, of the cluster, which is what? The elect of the nation of Israel. And a plant of a great people. Because the Lord is going to give us renown again. He's going to build us back up. He's going to give us that reputation back. But it's going to be far greater than it was back then. It says, let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain. Yeah, because you have people that were born to be destroyed. Just like you have people or Israelites that were born to be delivered. It says, and let my grape be kept, which is the elect, and my plant. For with great labor have I made it perfect. And the perfection is going on now. Through the teachings. Through this word. You know? Well, his name is Yahweh Shai. It's not Jesus Christ. His, his name is Yahweh Shai in the Hebrew. Because there were no J's in the Hebrew. His name, I write it down. That's his name right there, Yahweh Shai. Not Jesus Christ. Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, uh, the son, Yahweh Shai, the Messiah. Because the J didn't come about until the uh, 1524 when you do the research. So our Lord didn't speak uh, Greek. He didn't speak English. His name was never spelled with a J. This is something newer. From, the fifth, from 1524 to the present. That's when the letter J came into existence. So it says, Let the multitude perish then which was born in vain, and let my grape be kept and my plant. For with great labor have I made it perfect. And that's what's going on right now. Because the, the, the word... Is what's causing the perfection of the saints. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. And this is why you have you no know, 
you know, apostles, uh, bishops, deacons, teachers, you know, prophets, preachers out there teaching his word to build up the people of the Most High, the Israelites. Um, Ephesians 4.11, it says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. For what purpose? For the perfecting of the saints. Right, to make the saints perfect. Through what? Through the understanding of the things that are pleasing unto the Father. There's another scripture. I believe that's Ephesians, if I'm not mistaken. Just bear with me. I'll, I'll go back. Not, not if you, yeah, if, it might be Ephesians, the fifth chapter. Just bear with me. Um, I can't think of the... Oh, man. Barakate HaObashim HaShai went right to it. Uh, Ephesians 5 and 8. The point is in 10. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now ye are light in the Lord. Walk as children of, of light. Right, because we were all at one time out in this world, you know, thinking the same conventional way that everybody else thinks. We were thinking about God. We were thinking about, you know, his name being Jehovah, his son's name being Jesus Christ, them being so-called white people, you know. We we all thought, we all had that same conventional thought until the Lord shined his light, which is this word, into our vessels and remove that darkness and allowed us to see what is really going on. And now we have the true light, which is the scriptures, the Bible, and now we understand that what we were taught before was totally wrong. That's why we had to go through a transformation of unlearning what we learned in the world and relearning through the scriptures, becoming a new man. So it says, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. And that's what we're learning, the fruits of the Spirit, the truth. What is really pleasing to the Heavenly Father, who He really is, what His real name is, and what His actual plans are, His true plans. Not what has been shoved down our throats for centuries through plantation Christianity, which is nothing more than white supremacy which is pushed upon us by the so-called white man because they were in the power of superiority. They were in the, in the um, rulership seat. So they pushed their agenda upon us, their uh, belief, which go, goes totally contrary to what the scriptures say. It says, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord, right? Which is this truth. And that's why we have the, the scriptures that give us the, the very things that the Heavenly Father is pleased with. So that we can find good graces in His sight. Uh, this is the brother um, Baruch 4.37. It says, Lo, thy sons come whom thou sentest away. They come gathered together from the east to the west. By the what? By the word of the Holy One, rejoicing in the glory of the Most High, Yahweh Bashem Shai. Why? Because we lost that way, and now it's being opened back up to us. It says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them, correct them. And if they happen to catch themselves from it, talking about the Israelites, then there's a chance that they might be a part of the elect. But if not, then you know that they're not part of the elect. Uh, so it goes on more, but let's go back to Ephesians 4 and 12 now. So the Lord gave all of these offices, which are all pretty much teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, meaning to build them up and to furnish them mentally with the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the Heavenly Father so that they can be perfect, they can be entire, and whenever there's situations that come up, they can reflect back on the Scriptures and say, okay, well, the Scriptures say so-and-so and such-and-such. -and -such. I'm faced with this decision that's in front of me and in order for me to find graces in the sight of the Most High, I have to choose the right path. And that's why it's important to know this, the truth. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free, you know, and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. It says, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Yahweh Shai. It says, till we all come in the unity of the faith, because there is only one truth, one doctrine, one baptism. Just like there's only one God, one power, Yahweh, And he has his son, Yahweh Shai. And of the knowledge of the Son of the Most High. 
unto a what? Perfect man. Because people in the world are not perfect. We're not perfect as far as, you know, um, doing, we, we, we're righteous and we do everything correctly. No, we are perfect through the understanding of the scriptures that the Lord gave us. This is Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 9. Uh, I'm sorry, not 9. Um, just bear with me one second. Um, is it 2 Corinthians 2? No, I think it's 1 Corinthians 2. Yeah, 1 Corinthians 2. So like you. 1 Corinthians 2 and 6. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, which is what? Plantation Christianity, Roman Catholicism, all of those different religions, philosophies, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught, right? Which, is, which are the judges, rulers, uh, the preachers, the pastors in these churches. So we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. Perfect in what? In understanding. That's why it says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Because wisdom and knowledge without understanding is vain. Because you can have all the wisdom and the knowledge of the Bible all you want. You can quote scriptures every, all day long. But if you don't have the understanding of it, then it can't serve you. You see? You have to have the understanding in order to be able to apply the wisdom and the knowledge of the Bible. Otherwise, you, you'll be like a lunatic. So, going back to Ephesians 4.13, till we all come in the, in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Most High, a son of the Most High, unto a perfect man, Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Yahweh Shai. Right. And then this part here goes that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro. Right. Because you have a lot of individuals out there that are learning from this individual. They're learning from that individual. They're learning from the Muslims. They're learning from the Moors. They're learning from the black conscious community. They're learning from the Israelites. They're learning from so-called white past. I mean, they're totally confused. And they're thinking that they're on the right path because they're picking a little out of that that they like and a little out of this that they like and a little out of that that they like and they're making a hodgepodge of madness. Because the scriptures say a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. So it says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. Right, because these doctrines that are taught out here are like the wind. And if you have... A strong wind, strong enough wind coming through, whatever is not nailed down or rooted down is going to be what? Moved and swept out of the way. And that's what happens with a lot of Israelites. They're not fully grounded and settled in what they believe in. So then when all of these different philosophies come through as that wind, it blows them right down the street. You're just a straw in the wind. A straw in the wind. Inside joke. It says, by the slight of men. Right, the slight is what? Craftiness. Like you have people that play cards, three card Monty or whatever the hell them different card games are, right? And then the guy says, you know, he, he, he uh, has one person betting, which is they, they're on the same team. And then, you know, he just throws the cards around. And then the guy that's betting that's on his side always finds the right card. Find the red card. Find the red card. The heart, the hearts, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then they do their thing. And then the guy always gets to, you know, he, 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 he picks the right one. And then he gives him $20 on top of the $20 he gave, which means he got $40 now. And he might play again and win again because they're both on the same team. Then you come up because you've been watching. You say, oh, I could do that. And he starts doing his thing. But then you don't understand that he's flipping and throwing cards, you know, and, 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 and um, taking your, um, um, your, your uh, attention away from it because of a sleight of hand so he might have two cards on the right hand one card on the left hand and the two cards on the right hand the one on the top is the heart but then when he goes to throw it he throws the one on the bottom which is a spade and then he throws the other one over that and then your eyes now are focused on the spade and then he, he keeps moving it around but he won't do it he won't do any more of that and then your eyes on the spade, and you put the 20 on the spade, and he flips it over. Oh, you lost and took your money. That's how these doctrines are out here. And a lot of these individuals are operating under falsehood. 
because they're operating for 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 reward, for money, for filthy lucre's sake. It says, and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie and wait to deceive, and that's exactly what they do. So going back to where were we at? Let's see. Uh, let's go to Second Ezra's now. Let's go to seventh chapter. Matter of fact, let's just click back twice. Second Ezra 7, and let's go to 3. It says, And I said, Speak on my power. Then said he unto me, The sea is set in a wide place, that it might be deep and great. But put the case, the entrance were narrow and like a river. Who then, excuse me, who then could go into the sea to look upon it and to rule it? If he went not through the narrow, how could he come into the broad? Right, and that's why it says, Narrow is the way that leadeth unto life, and very few there be that find it. Right? Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the book of Luke. Right? Luke, the uh, 13th chapter, and the 22nd verse. Uh, listen to this. It says, Teaching in the Villages. And, um, and he went through the cities and villages teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. Then said, uh, then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, this is what he said. Matter of fact, let's get the red letter edition. So you can see when the Lord speaks. Now that he's about to answer him. Luke 13, 24, because he, he asked him a question. If there were few that be saved. He says, strive to enter in at the straight gate. Now, if you look at the word straight, it's not spelled straight, S-T-R-A-I-G-H-T, uh, as in straight ahead, it's spelled S-T-R-A-I-T. And this is a different, it sounds the same, but it's a different definition for it. And the word straight gate in this means a position of difficulty. Like you have the Straits of Hormuz, you have diff when you when you have a body of water, where you might be going through a gulf, which is uh, covered on three sides by land, right? And it's it's water that's covered on three sides by land, and you go into there before you go into that gulf, you have to par pass a, a part that's very narrow, that's called a strait, and if and you have to be expert in driving or, or, or navigating your ship through there, or else you can get shipwrecked. So that's what the Lord is saying. You have to, uh, you have to come. You have to come into the straight gate. But there's a key here. It says strive to enter into the straight gate, because the straight gate alone is hard. But to get to that straight gate is even harder. Why? Because you have so many different, you know, teachings out there. You have so many different groups. You know, you have. Um, you know, so much going on and so much chaos and turmoil going on that only divine power, the divine power of Yahweh Bashem Al Shai has to guide you and lead you to be able to get to the right, you know, um, to the right way. So when we look up this word strive, the word there is agonitzo mahi, right? Agonitzo sounds like what? Agony. Agonizo mahi, right? Comes from the from the Greek uh, ar, uh, agon. So it says to enter a contest, contend in the gymnastic games because this is a contest. It's a race. It says to contend with adversaries, fight. Metaphorically, to contend, struggle with difficulties and dangers, to endeavor with uh, strenuous zeal. Strive to obtain something. So it's a labor. It's a fight. Just to find and to enter into that straight gate. That position of difficulty. When you go to this word argon, uh, um, agon. It goes to an assembly. A battle. Generally any struggle or contest. And let's see what this says here. Okay, that goes in, just, just says to bring. So, striving is a, an agonizing thing, a fight. Just to get to the straight gate, the position of difficulty. 
It says, For many, I, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. You see? So many are going to seek to enter in, but they're not going to be able to enter in. Why? Because there's a block there. And let's see, let's see what it says for the word straight. It may be straight gate. Let me see. It's two, two words. Straight. Stenos. Narrow. Straight. I mean, it might be like a root word to strenuous, but I don't know. It just says stenos. Narrow, straight. It doesn't really go too hard, hard into it, but it says obstacles standing close about. And it's harder to run when you have obstacles in your way than when you have an open field. So we look up the word straight. The word straight, S-T-R-A-I-T, and this is what I was telling you about. So you have a gulf here, and you have what? A straight. You have to navigate your ship through there, which is hard to do. Same thing here. You have another one. Here you have the Strait of Gibraltar. Uh, you have the uh, same thing, Strait of Gibraltar. So it's, it's hard to pass through there unless you're an expert navigator. Strait, a narrow passage of water connecting two seas or two other large areas of water. Now the point we want is here. Used in reference to a situation characterized by a specified degree of of trouble or difficulty. And that's what it is, a position of difficulty. So just to get to the position of difficulty, there's a fight, an agonizing fight. Because people are going to come against us, they're going to they're going to mock at us. We're going to lose friends, we're going to lose family members, we're going to lose uh wives. Sisters are going to lose husbands. We're going to lose children, jobs, you know, so on and so forth. The list goes on and on and on, just all depending on, on the individual's ability of how much they can take because the Lord is not going to put more on someone that, that they can't take. So when we go and we precept that, this one here with the book of Matthew 7, which is, which is a, another one that says the same thing. I went there because the word strive came into mind and I wanted to see what that said and boom. Lo and behold, it's an agony. So Matthew 7, 13, the narrow and wide gates. Enter ye in at the straight gate. Matter of fact, let me see what the word enter here is. It's a little different. Aiser uh, komahi. To go out or come in to enter men or animals. Okay, so it goes into, I'm pretty sure there's more to it, but let's, let's get back. It says, enter ye in. In at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way, that leadeth, un uh, that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Right. And the way into Christianity is open. It's very broad. It's, it's very easy. They have millions and billions of members out there in these different um, religions. But the way of the path of life is going to be very narrow. Which is what we're reading in the book of Second Ezra, the seventh chapter, because straight is a gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. And and you have people in the churches that quote this, but they have no understanding or clue of what it really means. <clears throat> so, let's go to Acts fourteen and twenty-two. It says, confirming the souls of the disciples. This is what a confirmation of the souls of the disciples is like. And exhorting them to continue in the faith. Why? Because things are going to get hard. They're going to be hard. But there is a reward at the end if we make it to the end. He that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. And that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of the Most High. So it's not going to be an easy road. But the difference is the elect, excuse me, have a guide a spiritual guide from Yahweh Bashem Yahushai guiding them in the right path to make the right decisions, to make the right turns, to make, you know, all the right choices to attain until eternal life. So going back to 2nd Ezra 7, where are we at? Verse 5, Who then could go into the sea to look upon it, which the sea represents what? It's, sea is wide, right? It represents the kingdom of heaven. It says, to look upon it and to rule it if he went not through the narrow. How could he come into the broad? And the broad be in the kingdom also. 
It says, there is also another thing. A city is builded and set upon a broad field, which is the kingdom of heaven. And it's full of all good things. There's a lot. The Lord said that there's uh, at his right hand are pleasures evermore. Right? Um, it says, it says, uh, the entrance thereof is narrow and is set in a dangerous place to fall like as if there were a fire on the right hand and on the left a deep water. And that's the, the, the uh, straight, hard you know, um, way to go in order to get there. And one only path between them both, right? Even between the fire and the water, so small there could be there could but one man go there at once. So there's you can't it can't be two people or three people walking side by side. No, it's one at a time. That's how that's how narrow that road is. If this city now were given unto a man for an inheritance, if he never shall pass the danger set before it, how shall he receive his disinheritance, right? And that's why, as the name of the lesson is, the kingdom is not for everybody. All nations are not a part of this. We already proved that. But even among Israel, not all Israel is going to make it in this in this time. Only the elect. But through the elect, the rest of Israel is going to come back. Back. Why? Because the scriptures say that, you know, all thy people shall all be righteous. So they're going to come back through the ones that make it. Then it says, and, and I said, it is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, even so also is Israel's portion. Because for their sakes I made the world. See? So for the sakes of the Israelites, for our people, the Lord made the world. Because prior to this, uh, Ezra was asking the Lord, you know, we are your fervent lovers. But we see that the nations, they got their goods. And we haven't received an inheritance. Why is this? If we be your people, if we be your darling, why don't we have a, a, a possession with the nations? And the Lord was breaking it down to him. Because we got to go through that narrow uh, gate, through that straight gate. And that's how, that's the way that the Israelites that are part of the elect are going to get to the kingdom of heaven. Going through that narrow, straight way. Because that position of difficulty is going to do what? It's going to purge those that are going through that spiritual fire. And that's what the Lord is doing right now. He's purging us. All right. Uh, so let's go from there. Let me see where we at. Well, you know what? I'm going to end it there because I wanted to go through Revelation 11 and Revelation 21, but that's going to take a while. So Lord, well, maybe I, if the Spirit allows, I could do a part two and go through those two precepts because that also gives more cement, you know, more more uh, force, you know, to the, uh, to the lesson. So if the Spirit allows, you know, I'll come back and I'll do a part two. If you know, So with that, I pray that you brothers and your few sisters have been edified. And to the next time I say, Shalom.